this is the healthiest and most holistically well I've ever been in my life. So part of this now for me is um, locking down those gains. Hey, Mel, thanks for your, your time today. Greatly appreciate it um, and uh, a pretty amazing journey uh, that, you've, uh, that you've been on here with us at Vision. And one of the reasons for wanting to chat to yourself is that, you know, you have had an amazing journey and, and it really does stem from getting off your antidepressants um, that you're on for uh, since 2009. So I'd love to hear your story about what was happening in your life back at that time and, and sort of how you were at that time in your life. Well, obviously pretty unhappy um, and really a lot of things were going on at that time that weren't good for my health and weren't good for my my mental health and physical health. Um, I wasn't looking after myself. I, I never really, really ever looked after myself. I never really learned to do that or to prioritise that. Got to the point where I actually hadn't been sleeping properly. I had really horrific insomnia for about probably two years. Um, so yeah, really was not sleeping very much, a couple of hours a night, very broken, which is not so good for human uh, flourishing. No. <laughs> and the people that were around me, I didn't necessarily have the best support structures at that point. And yeah, um, after my GP basically argued with me for about six months or uh, <laughs> uh, warmly encouraged me that I really needed to think about taking antidepressants to get on top of the insomnia. Um, and I I refused, refused, fought, argued. Um, and I think mostly the stigma of having poor mental health, like I haven't got this, I'm not mm -hmm. I'm in control of myself and my emotions in my life. Um, and, yeah, pretty much just came to a point where I was quite literally in tears on the floor in my GP's office saying, I don't, I can't do this anymore. I don't have anything left in me. And she said, okay, will you now take the antidepressants? Um, and I did, thank goodness. And I, I noticed positive results probably within about two weeks. Um, it was, it yeah. was quite, quite a rapid uptick. Um, and I also started therapy at that time. I was very adamant that I wouldn't be taking the medication alone because it's kind of um, medication I think is only one part of the solution for a lot of people. And for me, that, that was true. So I was really overweight at that time as well. Um, wasn't looking after my body, wasn't really exercising at all. Um, yeah, just just not really ticking a lot of boxes circa 2009, if I'm honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, let's fast forward, though, because, like, that was obviously a bit of a, a turning point in one direction in your life. But if we fast forward to, you know, this beautiful time in 2021 and 2020 that we went through, like, you are 21.4 kilos down, you do sleep better, you know, yeah. you're running, you, you get yes. the runs, um, and you're off the antidepressants. So... I'm sure I've given it a college crack, I tell you what. Um, yeah, just couldn't be too further points apart on the compass in a lot of ways. Um, I'm, I'm much stronger, I'm more resilient, I'm more capable of um, handling, like riding the emotional waves, including lockdown and occasional earthquakes. Um, no antidepressants. Uh, I finished taking those with my GP supervision, which is a really important point. Um, you shouldn't ever just stop taking them. Yeah, for um, sure, definitely. A couple of months ago, I felt like, well, if I'm going to be locked in the house, I'm going to smash some other goals because I can't enjoy the goals of leaving the house. Uh, and this was just one of the one of the things. Yep, running three times a week, um, eating a thousand times better, 21.4 kilos lighter than I was sort of this time last year. Um, I've made friends that, yeah, just killing it a little bit, <laughs> which doesn't mean it's not hard. Sometimes it is, um, but I'm better able to kind of write it out, I think. Yeah, and that's a good point that you make. You talk about it like you can't do it on your own. Like you do need the right support around you. And I know you've got obviously you had your GP that um, supported you during this time. Uh, you also did therapists and you've got your trainer, uh, Macram. Like tell me about yep. having the right people around you which has helped you get to where you are today. I, I think the right personal trainer is a little bit like a therapist. You have to have the right personality blend. Um, I can be a little bit abusive in my training sessions, so it's nice Keep that it I... Coming. We love it. <laughs> the more it needs to match the better. We love it. I mean, he, he deserves it, so that's a separate oh. issue. But, um, you know, I, to have someone who can and kind of uh, riff off with me like that and kind of have that 
Um, but also, you know, the support, like I will text him crazy things like, hey, you know, <laughs> what should I do with this kind of food or how many calories does that have in it? And he will always, he's always so helpful and he'll explain things to me, not only answer the question, but actually explain the why, which helps it to bed down a little bit more. So having that support, um, having someone believe in me a little bit more than I believe in myself, like he'll sort of go, okay, what do you think about this for a goal? And I'll go, dude, you're like, you're actually mental. I can't, that's way (laughs) out of my capacity. And he'll go, okay, do you want to give it a try? And we'll try it and we'll hit it. And it's like, where did that come from? (laughs) Yeah, and it's, and it's, it's true though. Sometimes you just need somebody to believe in you before you can believe in yourself. And then once someone's giving you that encouragement and that push to move Mm. forward, like you then have that time going, yeah, no, I can do this. I know, and I have uh, had gym memberships before to sort of um, bigger franchises where it's really just like if you show up, if you don't, we don't really mind because we're getting the money. Whereas here, this is like, you know, if I don't post my food for a day, I get a text message. Where's your food? What have you been doing? Where are you at? Um, Yeah, that support. That support is huge. And it it is really important to get it right. So let's sort of flash back because it was – what do we say, the 9th of December 2020. Just tell me a little bit about your journey in the beginning with us, how it all was, and then as you sort of, you know, as I said, fast approaching 12 months um, with us and some amazing results, like tell us about your journey um, from, from start to where you are today. Well, so like many people in Melbourne last year, I dealt with my feelings about lockdown by um, having a relationship with Uber Eats that was not healthy. <laughs> no, you didn't have any wine? No wine? <laughs> really alcohol's not really my bag right or both (laughs) (laughs) um and yeah just just feeling worse and worse and kind of got toward the end of the year where I thought no I'm I'm not interested in this I'm not doing this again I'm not falling into these old patterns this is not I'm worth more than this and I deserve more than this I knew that I wanted a more personal approach than what you would get in perhaps some of the the larger gyms um because I've I had done that before and it had worked really well for me And, yeah, then I looked at the website and a lot of um, what was written there um, really resonated with what I was looking for, which was that holistic approach, not just going, here is the science of losing weight, because you can find that in a lot of places and you can find a lot of different takes on that in a lot of places. But acknowledging that food is part of life. And for me, I love, I love my food. I don't ever want a version of life that is just lettuce leaves and water because that's sad. I want to That's not living. No, for me, it's not as well. Finding a way, like eating foods that I enjoy eating that taste good, but that also nourish. And so, um, yeah, a lot of that really resonated with me. And I thought, look, I'm going to go, I'll see what this is about. And if if it doesn't quite fit, I'll go on. And I mean, the rest is history. I met with Luke. Um, we had a great chat. We had a lot of laughs. You kind of have to deal with this like lockdown rig that I've been working on. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of KFC. It's not going too well. Um, And it's a really vulnerable moment, I think, that first conversation. Um, And then I did my first body scan. Well, (laughs) I think I cried for an hour. You really have to be ready. You have to be 100% prepared to jump on board. And that doesn't mean it's hard straight away, but it means you have to be ready to do that and be ready to be confronted by your total visceral body fat and things like that being given to you on a really nice piece of paper. It's a beautiful so, piece of paper. Sometimes the truth will set you free and it you know, becomes real and, and we can talk about uh, the results that we see on the paper, but the way we feel in our body physically, mentally, you know, the way we get yeah. out of bed in the morning, the way we feel nourished, the way that we put our clothes on in the morning, the way that we walk in the street, the way we hold ourselves, like it's yeah. all the flow and effect from that sort of stuff, which thousand you know, percent. we didn't think we could give you more energy, but we have. Um, some people might call it scary, but I call it exciting, especially when <laughs> <you're back. laughs> the ginger power. He loves it. (laughs) So what's next for you, Mel? Let's let's talk about future. I know you're doing the running sort of stuff at the moment. You've had a bit of fun. What's what's on the horizon for Mel? Uh, Well, my first ever half marathon in the the coming weeks. It's been pushed back, unfortunately, a little bit, but that's good because it's more training time, which (laughs) I feel grateful for. Maybe it'll give me more time to worry about how I'm going to die at about 16 Ks. <laughs> um, this is the healthiest and most holistically well I've ever been in my life. So part of this now for me is 
um, locking down those gains and kind of luxuriating in the fact that I've managed if to do this. If we could do a mic drop moment, Mal, that was it. Like literally drop the mic because, you know, you just made a great point. It's like sometimes we don't need to continually aspire to do more or, or try more or become more. We just need to actually go, this is the routine that I've built in my life. And to stay in this happy place of feeling fit, healthy, energetic, um, I just need to keep doing this routine. So the goal is to actually keep doing what we're doing and keep a good routine that we enjoy doing. You know, even thinking about where I was six months ago, um, I, I think I ran, I found a Facebook post the other day where I was really proud of myself for running 3.8 kilometres and I really was at the time because yeah. it was huge then and now I look back and I go, oh, baby Melanie, 3.8 <laughs> kilometres. <laughs> but that was six months ago, yeah, you know. Sure. Sometimes you really do just need to take that moment and really consciously and very presently go, I've actually killed it a little bit for the last like yeah. nine months. And, and that doesn't mean you stop growing and that doesn't mean you just sit back on your laurels and start eating cake again. Um, <laughs> but, you know, yeah, for me, yeah, and consolidate those gains and go, okay, so I've done X across this period of time. What do I want to keep from that? Because not everything will work for every person. I will never enjoy doing burpees. They are the food of the devil and I do not like them. And I will never, I refuse to like them. I refuse to enjoy doing them because I hate them so much. But there are a hundred thousand other things that I can do training wise that I really enjoy that I will put all of my effort into. So if you'd said to me 12 months ago, oh, by this time next year, you'll be running 16 Ks every Saturday and it won't even make you cry. I would have been like, get out of here. You're drunk. Like there's no <laughs> way. There's no way. Who knows? All right, in summary, what would be Mal's top two tips? Okay. Number one is to, is to surround yourself with the right people. And I think that's um, a huge part of what sets vision aside is that it is, and I know this sounds really like trite, contrived, but it's true. It's a community. I've made so many friends in the last nine months who will um, provide support and recipes and laughter and funny memes and just all the things (laughs) But it's so great because, um, you know, you have people around you who have similar goals and similar aspirations. And so you're all working together to build each other up. And that's really, that's been really critical for me is to have the right people. That's tip number one. Tip number two, I would say, is to stay curious. When you start any big life change, um, it can feel really overwhelming. It's very daunting and you are very, very vulnerable a lot of the time. Mm. And one thing I found really helpful is just rather than being overwhelmed by those feelings as they come up, and they still do now, um, just kind of get curious as to why you're feeling that way. A lot of the time for me, it's like, oh, I didn't get enough sleep last night, of course, (laughs) rather than get trapped in that cycle, which I've been super guilty of, of, making a less excellent choice and then feeling crap and then making more bad choices to try and sort of band-aid over that bad feeling, just kind of go, okay, so I ate sushi yesterday and I probably ate a little too much and it turns out there's a lot of carbs in sushi, which I did not think there would be. But instead of going, oh, well, you know, now I've stuffed it, I'm just going to eat crap for the rest of the week and I'll start again Monday, just, just to kind of take that moment and take that breath and that pause and go, okay, I did make a less than excellent choice, but it was better than having takeaway, which was the other thing that I was considering at that point mm. in time. Um, and also I'm allowed to make the occasional choice that is not sterling silver and perfect yeah. because my goals are here and they're important to me and, and it doesn't matter, you know, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I think stay curious and stay really present and grounded and, and let the feelings come to you. You can feel like you want to eat a family block of chocolate. I pretty much do every day. You can have that feeling. Just try not to act on it <laughs> as much, you know. No, I love it. So great. There's two two great that there. is, you know, one, have the right people around you to support you and the ones that are going to, you know, be there with you on the journey and, and uplift you, not the, not the Debbie, Debbie Downer, so to speak. Yeah. Poor Debbie. Poor Debbie. (laughs) And number two, just be curious and don't don't be hard on yourself. You know, so that's awesome. No. Well, like we are proud of you. Like we we love 
your journey. And as I said, you put a post up a, a while ago and, you know, look, I did get very emotional reading that sort of stuff because it is exactly why we do what we do, um, you know, because we love exercise and we love the people that uh, inside of our studio. So thank you, Mel. I appreciate your time. You're an absolute rock star. And keep kicking your goals. Love it. Ken and Will, thank you very much. <laughs>